All right, lads, before we start today's yarn, I want to shout out Manscaped. They're supporting today's episode of The Search. They've launched a new product, the Lawnmower 4.0, right? It's the best clipper for shaving down there. Legit, it's the best clipper. You know all them other clippers, they cut you, they graze you, this and that. It's the best clipper, and I got a, I got a code for you. If you go to manscaped.com, you get 20% off by using the code The Search. You can click the link in the description, it'll be there. I'll go to manscaped.com. Make sure you use the code The Search, you get 20% off. Gun clipper, lad, go check it out. Eats. For years and years, like for centuries, like Australia's been painted as a white nation. You yeah. go on tourism ads, it's just, you know, a be blonde beach babes and, yeah. you know, and snags on the Barbie. Like it wasn't ever about culture. We didn't yeah. see black faces. So it's like, you know, and we had to try that a little bit harder than yeah. the rest of, you know, you know, those we've just, you had to be white and pretty, you know? Yeah, yeah. So we had to try that a little bit harder, but we had so much, so much talent, so much culture. And I mean, like to be over, like getting billboards over in America, like in the US and in England, like especially in England. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's mad. It's so like empowering because because I have my daughter with me and she's oaked up and it's like that we're showing black faces in this country that have kind of been hidden for so yeah. long and this path has been paved and with a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and a lot of struggle, but kind of we, we're here and we get to pave this for our future generations now. So. Welcome back, episode seven of The Search. I'm Spanian. Today we've got a hectic guest. She's a proud Koori woman, gone through a lot in her life, in and out of prison, addicted to ice, but she's overcome it all. Living her best life, she's a rapper. Her name's Barker. Welcome, welcome. She's now living in Maryland's, been, in, been out of jail for five years. Five years now? Yes. Yeah, the same as me. What, 2017? Yeah. Yeah, same as me, same as me. That's so huge. <laughs> all right, boom. Ooh, Off yeah. the drugs for five years. Yeah. That's mad, let's go. Just put out an EP, I sussed that out. Black Matriarch. How long did that take you to do? I was been sitting in the works for a bit, like, yeah. you know, sitting on it and, yeah, we got, COVID happened, went into lockdown, we we're gonna release it sooner, but glad we didn't and got to, yeah, sit back and perfect it. But yeah. I think, yeah, two years in the making. I oh think. yeah, mad, mad, yeah. mad. I seen the clip, it was very well done. Oh, Sussed the clip out, Black Matriarch. The, 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 the main song of it's called Black Matriarch too in the clip, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of effort put in that clip. GQ is calling her the matriarch of Australian rap. A few months ago, Face was up on billboards in New York, LA, London. Nah, was it? <laughs> yeah. I haven't Hers even had my, where's, where's my billboard? <laughs> wow, look how famous I am. Where's my billboards? <laughs> Legit though. She's kicking goals, left, right, this and that. Name's Barker, let's cut for a search. How you doing? How are you? Yeah, good, my brother. Where'd you get your name? Uh, Barker means, um, I'm a Barkindji woman, so which means river people. So we call the Murray Darling River Barker. All right. Yeah, so like a river, like we oh, rap. Barkindji means river people, people. Uh, river people. Yeah. All right, and the Barker River. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the black name for the Murray River. Yeah, yeah. Where is the Murray River? Where's the Barker? Yeah. Oh, it stretches, I think it stretches from Queensland to... Uh, through to New South Wales down to South Australia, I'm pretty sure it's yeah, no it's, yeah, it stretches. What part of that was, was your? Oh, Victoria. Your oh, in um, Victoria. Yeah, we're from the f yeah the far corners, far west corners of New South Wales. Oh yeah. So Wilkenia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wilkenia. I know lads from Wilkenia and that. Yeah. Is that like the river? <laughs> yeah, and I used to lads from there. <laughs> um, rough cunts. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> is that the Riverina? Anywhere near like Riverina's more Bree. More Bree, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, what was your upbringing like? Tell me about the beginning of your journey. What was it like growing up there? It was challenging, like, you know, with yeah. identity and, you know, growing up in, in Maryland's, we were the only black fellas in the neighbourhood, so we copped a lot of racism, a lot of shit, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. and it was it was troubling at the time and, you know, trying to find your way, who you are, mm -hmm. you know, and as a kid you just want to be accepted as well. But, yeah. you know, I always had, like, my brothers and my sister to, like, come home new and... I guess confide in and they'd make me feel strong yeah. or tell me tell me to tell them where to shove it. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and I'd had mum, you know, raised by a single mother and, you know, house out and stuff, but, you know, she made it happen for us kids, you know. Yeah, man. So it was, yeah. Yeah, because I know, I, like, I don't think I've ever met any black fellas from Maryland's. It's all <laughs> Islanders and, like, Arabs and that, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good food, eh? Yeah. Yeah, kebab plates everywhere. <laughs> How'd you get into hip-hop? Were uh, you always rapping since you were young? 
Yeah, I used to like make up, like make up songs and like and sing them. But yeah, then yeah, I realized yeah. I couldn't sing for shit. So <laughs> <laughs> I would say that was that in a song that I heard. I forgot what song it was. I was playing that EP. Someone was singing. That was that you. You there's, singing your hook. There's King Brown. Yeah. Where I sing, but it's heavily auto tuned. It's <laughs> King Brown, but that's you singing. No, that sounded good. Yeah. <laughs> Even when I was listening with my missus, legit. No, my missus said, "Oh, she can sing." Oh, that's yeah. Cool. So there you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mad. Um. I might start a singing career. <laughs> 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 no. how, how did it come about? Like. You ended up, like I said in the intro, you ended up becoming a criminal, going to jail. How'd that come about? Like, was that was it, we just when you were young, always doing crime, or you got on drugs and it fell that way? I think it was life. Like, you know, you get a kick, like that adrenaline rush, you know. And I think we we'll, when we were kids, we used to break in to my neighbor neighbor's house and yeah. kind of make sandwiches. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't, at the time, I didn't think it was a break. I just thought, I'm yeah. just going to go in her house and make just a sandwich. Played, but yeah. you kind of got that adrenaline rush at doing that things. And, you know, I guess crime, like I'd, I'd go stealing, like we'd steal from shops and that. And yeah. then, you know, just as kids, you know, yeah. after school, late night. And then it kind of progressed when I got a drug habit. Like mm -hmm. 15 years old, I started smoking ice. And then I thought, how am I going to support? 15. Yeah. Is that was that around Mary? Because I don't really know Western Sydney. I'm from like around here, Redfern Glebe. Mm. Is that normal? Not normal. Like nah. I don't feel like I feel like there were crackheads. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> we had our neighbour who was a crackhead, and so Isn't it was there easy. Crack flats there? Yeah, yeah. There is, yeah. Yeah, there's <laughs> trap houses. Were you up in them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was all up in there. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was, it was. I guess. Because we had a neighbour that was a dealer, so, you yeah. know, it was kind of accessible. Like, my best mate lived there, and so that was her mum, and it would just be, you know, easy for me to kind of go over there, swap things over, spend my whole pay there, and... Yeah. Fuck, though. It's gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When's it, so you end up getting locked up? Yeah. In juvie, or first time was jail? No, nah, juvie. Juvie? Yeah, just little... Where was the juvie then? What Gina was Perina? Gina Perina. Silver and water? Oh, no, Lickham. not Silver Water, Lickham. Lickham. Yeah, oh, yeah. Minda, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I remember, like, obviously, I'm, a, I'm like 10 years older than you. I used to be Yasma, but I heard that's closed down. Yeah. So you went to Juna Perina, a couple little things. Mm. Adult? Adult, I went in when I was 18. Yeah. Like, it cr pretty much just progressed yeah, straight yeah. in there and, um, you know, just kind of getting drunk at the time and, you know, yeah. assault police and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. it was pretty much. Yeah, just, just living the life to the fullest, mate. <laughs> living that life, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Like, all, yeah. All jokes aside, just it would have been just completely normal. Yeah, yeah it that's was. It, that's like everyone I knew. It's just what you do. Survival, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's just all, you, yeah. I read that one of the, this is the last time that you were in jail. Yeah. You end up having your kid while you were in jail. Um. So, like, did you have to go to hospital? Or they got a hospital in. No, nah, we went to Nepean. Nepean, yeah. Yeah, the guard was. They come at, like come with ya. Um, take you there in, you know, the, uh, I guess, screw car, I don't yeah, know what yeah, to call it, yeah, but, yeah. um, they take you there in the car. Like a Commodore with Perspex and that. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they take me there and then the, they said, oh, you know, it's up to the screw if he wants to come in and stay, like, you know, yeah, while yeah. you're giving birth. I'm like, That's ridiculous. Yeah. But, um, he said, like, I told him, you know, I'm not comfortable with you in here, yeah. mate. Like, can you sit outside? And then he did. He did? Yeah. Oh, which good. was good. Um, yeah. But then I remember, like, I had my sister there in my... That's in my future that they even have the option to do that. Yeah, it's gross. Like, if they can override the, you know, like yeah. the... Just, like, especially men, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. They're with, why would you want to, you yeah, know? Does it even make sense? Yeah. yeah. But good on him for saying, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And then, and then, and then what, what happened? I had um my son's father in there with me and my yeah. sister because we signed um that yellow slip there. And it was nice having, you know, them there at yeah. the time and... Um, you felt like some sort of normality, I guess, you yeah, know, like yeah. it was a normal birth and I just felt like, kind of took me out of the fact that I was in my greens giving birth to my son at the time and I stayed in there for five days, um, sorry, three days with him and then they ended up taking me back to the prison and while my son was still in hospital and that's when reality hit, like, fuck, this is what I've turned into, you know, yeah. this is where I'm leaving my kid. And you just, I thought, you know, I have, a, I thought I hit rock bottom before, but f that feeling there, knowing that my son's not there and I'm just going back to prison like it, nothing happened, you know. And I remember going back to the yard and 
the sister girls are looking at me through the gate and I'm looking at them through the gate and they could tell I was broken, you know? Yeah. And they got in there, they strip searched me even after giving birth to like what yeah, am yeah. I gonna put? And you, you just know? come from the hospital. Yeah. yeah. It's like what am I gonna put? Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, nothing yeah, there, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they let me out and then the sister girls just see me. They're like, you're right, you're right. Like, you know, they could tell I wanted to break down. Like, yeah. I'm trying to stay strong because it's jail. You know, you'd, you just want to be strong. But the sister girls just all crowded around me in a big circle and just yeah. just cuddled me there. And no, that's gross. Yeah, no. That would have been up to them like the hardest point of your life. Yeah. Do you see that as like, because obviously look how far you've come. Do you see that as your like definitive moment? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I thought I had it like it was leading up. Yeah. You know, there was times where I was like, you know, I just I just thought you couldn't give up. Like, I thought once you're in that lifestyle, this, you can't get out. Like, I thought yeah. I'd never seen any, you know, people off on ice getting clean. Like, yeah. I never seen that modelled to me. I never seen anybody break free from that cycle and stay clean. And yeah. so it was just like, I want it, but is it real? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, and but that time I was just like, this is where it's going to keep leading me. You know, yeah. it's going to get worse. And then now... You know, I've got three kids waiting at home. What am I modelling yeah. to my babies, you know? Yeah. And see how you say that. I want to say this here because a lot of people who don't understand, people that aren't, are from completely different lives to us, they always say, and they're always like carrying on, why are people so interested in people from jail? Spanian, why do you talk about jail so much? Who cares if someone's from Hauso? Who cares about that? What's cool about that? And say, what I'm saying is, See how you just said there is you don't you didn't know that people could live like get off ice, and so coming from adversity like that and to being where we are and make something more special for a reason why there's all kids out there communities out there that just like her how she said that she didn't know that she didn't know people get off gear and people become successful she didn't know people go to jail and change their lives. And that's what's special, and that's why I emphasize that. So if you're wondering why I'm always so interested in that, well, that's what makes it special. You know what I mean? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyone can rap. Anyone yeah. can sit on a mic and talk on a podcast. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Anyone can do that. And there's a lot of people that do do that. But these are the things that make it special, and these are the stories that actually help people. So that's why I put an emphasis on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What was it like coming out and reintegrating? So when you got it, so in that time, h how long did you have left after your, your son was taken away from you? How mm. long did you have left be before you were getting out? Two months. Two, all right, so not yeah, that not long. long. So long. yeah, so lucky. Yeah. Imagine you had a couple of years left. Be broken, uh, yeah, you know? Yeah, hard. All right, so you got out two months. You already had the mindset that after that moment, that's it. Yeah, yeah. You got out. And w when you got out, can I ask, did you get to have your son straight away? Or yeah. Was there big process um i didn't like he was signed into this thing called um oh it's like he's in care with um like he's in care for six months it's up to docs whether they give him back they're going to review my case within six months but my mum got him back and um she was taking care of him so you know mum let me come over and spend time with my son and spend time with my kids and i guess you know when she sees that i'm doing good she'll you know like during my addiction it will be tough love you know yeah you know just stay away because mum's straight but you know when i was doing good she'd want good for me she'd want me to be with my kids so grouse yeah that's mad and yeah. that's exactly how she should be yeah yeah exactly how you said so like the drug part you so say you've been out five years you've been clean for five years yeah. so they're on the same day yeah oh yeah. i mean i came i guess i got I got a few months up because when I went into jail, I guess you rehabilitate yeah. <laughs> straight yeah, away, yeah. you know. You're forced to, yeah. Yeah. So October 10th is my um, October 10th is my jail birthday. <laughs> my my drug birthday. <laughs> I've never heard it called that before. I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's my jail birthday. I'm born April the twentieth, but my jail birthday is yeah. You've got a couple, eh? Yeah, you've got a couple. I celebrate both still. <laughs> yeah, cakes on both yeah, days. Yeah. <laughs> Candles and all. Yeah. <laughs> of so it was roughly the same time. Yeah, when you roughly the same. Both. They go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. You're not staying out of jail for using drugs. Yeah. Yeah. So when you got out, so I know for me, I just kicked back and done nothing. Like, have you like before? going to jail before getting out this time had you ever like worked and had a career or you're just full in the life like me i had i had no experience jail was just my life yeah so i got out with like i'm gonna well i was already clean but like i got out i'm gonna stay out of jail that's all i knew i'm gonna stay out of jail and i'm gonna be this good person 
but with no idea what to do or how to do it. Did you have like, how did you find that? Uh, it was hard. Like I remember I did like a TAFE course, but I was getting like, I was going to TAFE off my head. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and then I got a job in at the NCIE there doing like, dishwasher oh did you yeah yeah and then i'd rock up off my head like cleaning dishes flat out you know (laughs) so i didn't last there long and you know i guess hospitality wasn't for me you know so it was like i only lasted there for a few days and then i stole bacon from there and uh, oh shit (laughs) 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 Um, i just yeah didn't answer their calls when they call me back but i went like because it was in redford did they know they were tracking you i don't think they knew i don't that's all like oh Oh, so you just stepped with the bacon and scrapped it yeah Yeah, yeah. (laughs) and they called me back for shifts but i thought they knew so i was just you know paranoid but um i scrapped with the bacon and then yeah started cooking up for all the mob in the tj hickey park there in yeah yeah it's just cooking for everyone and having a mad feed but i thought then i just got back into it then it was just was that with keenan cooking in the tj hickey park because uh, that's where he does his cook-ups. Yeah, no. He goes down there and barbecues. I think mine was just random. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Was it the teacher? Nah, nah, sorry. Wrong park. Um, The one near Surrey Hills, you know, the towers? Yeah. And then there's that oh, park the park there. next to it. Yeah, and they got a little yeah, barbecue yeah, yeah. near the swing yeah, set. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know the name of that park. I know the park, but... Yeah. Yeah, next to the towers. Yeah. Were you rapping in jail? Yeah, yeah. You were rapping in jail. Yeah. In the In the last time you were in jail? Like, were you thinking, I'm going to get out... And I'm going to smash it with rap? Nah. You weren't thinking that, eh? Nah. Because I wasn't. I didn't even know it was a thing that could be done. Nah. So you're rapping in jail. You got you got out. You started rapping as like a hobby or... How did it start? How did you start rapping? Um, well, like when it started becoming an actual... Like when I started, I guess, putting myself out there. Like before I just get in groups and just rap for the girls and that. Or rap for like, you know, little crews around Blacktown and stuff. But... Yeah. You know, um, I got out and I started putting raps up on Facebook. Like, I guess I was a bit shame. Oh, uh, like, Facebook you started? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And then um, I did this one called Black and Deadly and it kind of like, I think got like 1,200 shares or something like in a couple of days. And I was like... Oh, no way. Oh, what the hell? People like like my stuff. Yeah, <laughs> like, hectic, you know? hectic. And I guess that's where it started. Like, I just stopped being shame about it and started putting myself out there and was like, you know, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Like, if you love something, just go hard and chase it yeah. and if people like it then keep going you know yeah yeah so he had so it started started sh- getting shared on facebook yeah and then um how did it come about to like now you're pumping oh, yeah so um, how does that how what happened nookie gave me a hand up and he's like you know sis, nookie, nookie is a other first nations rapper yep. from Nara. Yep, yep. and um he's on the same bad apples label as me and yep. so the bad apples boys all had a had a um, gig at the, what's it called, Carriage Works called Club Curry. And he's like, sis, why don't you come, you know, spit a few bars after my gig? And I'm like, yeah, man, my bra. So I got up and I rapped for the first time, like in front of people on stage. And then after I got off, I'm like, ah, the adrenaline. Yeah. I'm like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So then, you know, um, oh, for as long as they, yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. as long as I'm cool. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> as long as it lasts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, that's like she was saying before we started. She goes, "Oh, this podcast is mad! Like, how many episodes of this I got? And I sp- as long as it sells, <laughs> you keep watching, I'll make it. If you stop watching, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> that's yeah. it, eh? Yeah. yeah, just keep doing it for as long as it for as long as it works. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, they like me when I'm an old rapper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I did that, and then yeah, just decided to like go and record for my titters. Like I thought there's something, you know. On the scene that we haven't seen, especially as First Nation sisters, like when, you know, I guess a a lot of our sister girls in the scene before us, prior to me, were like under these labels where it's like, don't talk about like, you know, sexualise yourself or talk about love or, you know, Um, it was, it wasn't like we had Sister Nay repping hard in OEFA, but we didn't have, like, I didn't see anything that I could relate to, you know, like I did see stuff I could relate to, but it wasn't to the extent where. Sister Nay is. um, Naomi Weddentong. And she That's the girl from. There used to be two of them. Shakaya. Shakaya. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. she's the one with the dark hair. Yeah. And she's a rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. She's been doing it for a while, eh? Yeah, no, yeah. she's a she's yeah, a yeah. G. Yeah. yeah, she's mad. And she was um. Then she went on to uh, she's in this group. I can't think. I got mum brain. Shakaya. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you said that, just bring back memories. <laughs> yeah. And the other girl with the teeth, yeah. the, big, the big smile, the, the gaff in the teeth like mine. That was the two of them, <laughs> eh? Yeah. 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 Please stop calling me. Yeah. That was the song. <laughs> yeah. 
Do they both rap or just her? Just sister, nay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So another she, one sucked that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're going to do another. They're coming back. Um, They're doing a black day out in Brisbane. Yeah, so yeah. they're going to do a comeback. And I'm like, fuck. Like, oh, yeah. You know, my childhood, like my little girl in me is like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but yeah, Sister Nay went on to do other stuff with, um. Uh, but, oh, forgive the group. I'm just, yeah. But she, that's it. God, no, thank you. Because it was there. And I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she went on to do stuff with the last connection, and yeah, like they made some pretty staunch raps where I could relate to her. And but yeah, I wanted to bring out for my titters and be something like give back to my sister girls. Yeah. And you know, speak about Smart. drug addiction and speak yeah, about yeah. being a mom and guess you know have my daughter in there with me and yeah. have the babies in there and represent our culture and yeah, yeah. You know, it was I didn't realize how much like it was something that I needed. Yeah. But it was like, and I needed to heal and it was something that came from my heart or what I wanted to hear as a kid, but I didn't realise how much it would get back, how much love I would get back from my sister girls and even, you know, First Nation sisters from Canada, like Turtle Island and, you know, Mouldy sisters were yeah. like, oh, yeah, this yeah, is man. so empowering and I was like... Yeah, oh. that's, that's mad. That, that actually, like, leads into what I've got here, the next question. Yeah. Like, there's a long tradition of Indigenous excellence in Australia. Like, in recent years, we've seen more superstars, Paddy Mills, Kid Leroy and that. Mm. What does it feel like to take an Aboriginal culture and heritage to the rest of the world? Like, and how do you think their perception of that is? Like, how do you find that? Um, it's empowering as yeah. fuck, you know? Like, we had, you know, for, for years and years, like, for centuries, like, Australia's been painted as a white nation you yep. go on tourism ads it's just you know a be blonde beach babes and yep. you know and snags on the barbie like it wasn't ever about culture we didn't yeah. see black faces so it's like you know and we had to try that a little bit harder than yeah. the rest of you know you yeah. know those we've just who had to be white and pretty you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so we had to try that a little bit harder but we had so much so much talent so much culture and i mean like to be over like getting billboards over in america like in the u.s and in England, like especially in England. Um, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's mad. <clears throat> it's so like empowering because I have my daughter with me and she's oaked up and yeah. it's like that we're showing black faces in this country that yeah, have kind yeah. of been hidden for so yeah, long yeah. and we're kind you know, we're representing now. Yeah. And um, people are wanting to be a part of us now, like wanting to be included in our conversations, yeah. you know, being a part of our tables that we built. So it's like, but... At this point, it's like I'm stand like just sitting on the shoulders of giants. Like, yeah. this is been this path has been paved and yeah, yeah, yeah. with a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and a mm. lot of struggle. But kind of we we're here and we get to pave this for our future generations now. So That's it's grouse. Yeah. yeah. Have you been overseas? Nah. Okay. I don't Do know if I'm allowed. I, I don't know same, if I'm allowed. Same. I don't know if I'm allowed. <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking. Like, you said how your face was on the billboards in, like, uh, in America and that, but you're not allowed there. Yeah. <laughs> this but is no. all you get of her, just a photo, because your government won't let her in. <laughs> let us in. Oh, yeah, I've never been anywhere either. I've been to Queensland once, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. You've been overseas? Yeah, I've been to Queensland. They're like a different race up there anyway. So, yeah, they yeah. are a different breed for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You and Dobby have a track called I Can't Breathe, which is highlighting the connections between the deaths in custody of David Dungay Jr. here in Australia and George Floyd in the USA and the racist system that allows these to happen. You performed I Can't Breathe at rallies in Sydney at High Park. How was that? I think that was like, that was like monumental. I yeah. think that was where, you know, we make songs for protest, you know. We yeah. make songs where I guess we envision our mob feeling empowered while they're, you know, we're kind of trying to dismantle the system or go against the system. Yeah. So. To be able to perform for mob there and looking at everybody and they're singing us words back to us, word for word, it's like... Are they? That's yeah. hectic. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, yeah. that's like, you know, I guess we're riding this radical music for like radical mob and, you know, and then we're seeing them there and the police were like, you know, this isn't a party, this isn't a dance party, but you could tell they were, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. didn't like, they felt threatened by it, you know, or they felt like, oh, what are, you know, they wanted to kind of break it up and it's like, it's not Did a party, they? this is, yeah. No way. Yeah, they're like, it's not a dance party. Eh? Yeah, <laughs> they didn't like it because we're like, fuck the police Stumbags, right in their faces. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they're just like, you know, yeah. ah, this hurts me, right in my privilege. <laughs> so, but it was, it was deadly, like seeing, seeing mob and being, celebrated in that way and being able to celebrate mob and I guess hold each other close you know that, yeah. that's what it's all about when was that i think on invasion day they they shut the, down the, yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. they shut covid just happened and they you know we've seen like you know australia day 
events go yeah. ahead, you know. Yeah, People yeah, yeah. were on the beaches and stuff having yeah. celebrations, but they wouldn't let mob march through the streets. Yeah. So they just kind of s- left us in that park and we were allowed to protest, uh, like allowed to have like a visual, like I guess a little get together sort of have a yarn and yeah. protest that way. But they, yeah, but it was just over policed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. then you started busting the tracks and all that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it broke up soon. Like, yeah. not long after that, they pretty much were like, that's it now. Like, we pretty much ended up, ended the protest. Like, you know, the organisers were there. Like, yeah. you know, we want you to end it. So you've done a few performances? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's your fa- what's your favourite so far? Opera House. Opera House. It's mad that they're doing these things. Like, I feel like the Opera House is coming a long way yeah, as yeah. well. Like, with including... You know, um, things outside of opera. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I don't imagine that to be at the opera house. That's grouse. Yeah, yeah. That's grouse. I've never even been in the opera house. Is it spin out? Yeah, I've been out. Like we performed outside. The only time I've been in was for yeah. my daughter's school spectacular, oh, yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that was yeah, a proud moment. Um, yeah, mad. But yeah, we did it at the forecourt in front of the. So like you could see the Harbour Bridge there, yeah, and yeah. then the opera house there, and oh, like, right w- smack bang in the middle. Where's the forecourt, like where the stairs are? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hectic. Yeah, That's so people nice. were sitting there and then, I guess, you know, that big wharf yeah. where the s- stairs are and then, um, yeah, they have the stage there. Yeah, and hectic, hectic. Yeah. yeah. How, how would you, like, summarise, like, what you're trying to achieve from your music? I what do you hope with it? I guess for my mob to feel heard, seen, yeah. educate, people to listen, you educate know. Educate everyone. Yeah. yeah. Um for you know this isn't just coming from these aren't just songs like to us you know these are like these are lived experience you know it's my lived experience as a you know a sister girl in so-called australia and i guess you know i want to be able to educate and but main main thing yeah for my sisters to feel seen and heard i guess you know i guess light that fire in it like keep that fire lit where we we want to fight for our rights and fight for you know for our mob to stop getting you know, stop getting killed in custody for our land to stop being destroyed. You know, there's things that, you know, where our kids are getting ripped from mothers. We want, I want to be able to educate people on what we go through and, you know, the prejudice against us. So, um, but yeah, main thing just for my sister girls to be seen and to feel staunch. And how (laughs) powerful is music for that? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if there is people that underestimate, a lot of people would understand how powerful it is, but like, it may just seem like you're making music to some people, but it's it's one of the biggest ways to teach and make people feel. Not ju- not you know what I mean. There's a lot mm. of people out there doing a lot of things, but like you know, in, to 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 get, put it into perspective, what I'm trying to say is that like I have a worry of the music that I used to make, and it was like criminal, violent music, and I noticed how powerful music was, and I thought to myself like if I could get locked up for hurting someone. How much worse is it if I glorify hurting people to a whole bunch of people? I think, you know, in a way, I'm, and, and so this is the opposite. This is the, the, the flip side of what you're doing. In a way, I thought that's, that's like, that's worse than doing the crime itself. You know what I mean? And so like educating and making people learn through music is as more powerful than in a lot of people going out and doing a lot of things. You know what I mean? So yeah, like people do under, I found, even with myself, people underestimate the power that it has. And it's eternal, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Music's eternal and the message within music is eternal as well. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you um, how you were just saying, like the things that you've personally been through. Um, I learned that your mum was part of the Stolen Generation. Yeah. And can you tell me about that? Like how's, how does that affect you and what's your knowledge of that? Um. It was hard. Like we grew up in Sydney. Mum got taken to Sydney from, you know, stolen, like taken from, well, stolen from a, you know, mum, like Nen and Pop, and you know, we. So your mum was actually stolen. Yeah. Because like it's, and I can understand like through lack of education how so many people don't see how close it is, because I grew up with blackfellas, yeah. my whole jail career with blackfellas. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like. In jail, an honorary black fella. And even for me, even for me, to hear that your mum was stolen, even for me, it's like, and I should know these things. Even for me, it's like, what do you mean, your mum? Not your great-great-grandma, your mum. Like, it's yeah. that close. It's that close. 
because a lot of people they think it's this they they talk about it like it's this thing like get over it it's 200 400 years ago you know what i mean yeah so your mum was taken yeah and they you know you get that a lot like get over the past like how can i get over the past when it's living within my mum like i can't it's get a, over it's not it's not even your past yeah it's it's your life yeah, yeah. that's it and it's like it's you know and my mum's only 60 you know yep. and you think those were the times when you know the white australia policy was kind of coming to an end and then they'll build like implementing other policies but they were just as racist you yep. know but they just called it another name you yeah, know yeah. Still the same, still the same shit, still the same guidelines, you know, pick on black fellas, make sure they assimilate, you know. And yeah. mum got taken and she was taken to Sydney, um, Bujura, the children's court. Yeah, Bujura. She got taken there. You know, that's just, a, should I say where, it, yeah, that's just like across the road. So yeah. I didn't want to give up where I was. <laughs> Bujura's <laughs> just across the road. Yeah, she's yeah. off the street, yeah, yeah. It's done plenty there, yeah. I yeah. should have taken there. Yeah, so that used to be, there's the facts like, um, Budura's a court and then they got that other building in front of Budura. Yep, yep, yep. And that's a, like a fax office now, I think. Yep. Well, when I was going I to court. I think it's like there. a cottage now. Like yeah. It looks like a cottage, eh? Yep, yep. Yeah. So that used to be the home when the kids would get taken from, you know, from the country. They'd get taken there and put in these homes where all these kids were and they'd kind of have missionaries there watching the kids. No way. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah. So she was put there. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's like a living quarters there. Yeah, yeah, that's at the sad. same place. And then they turn it into a fax office and I'm like, wow, that, that's kind of like no change way. it. Oh, no like, way. <laughs> wow, they're really fo yeah. fo following that, you know? Yeah. And did your mum like ever get to see her parents again? She never, we, she never got to see Nen. She was like eight years old, I think, or eight or ten and um they said to her like her foster mother at the time you know my mum talks about her like she was an evil witch Yo. and she said to her, my mum she come in the, like come in the house and said your mum's dead oh you don't you know you got me it's fine and it's like you know she used to beat my mum and you know she didn't let mum didn't get to go you know get to see like put Nan in the you know Nan in the yeah. ground or get to see her mum get buried or you know go to the funeral like it was just like oh who cares you don't you were taken when you were four like and, but my mum remembers getting taken yeah. you know like that's a vivid memory like when that trauma starts you that's the first thing you remember when your trauma starts and getting ripped from people that loved you you know and yeah so mum didn't get to s didn't get to put Nen to rest and kind of grew up just I guess you know like the state ward you know and when she was like my, one of my uncles, Uncle Cliffy, he used to run away from, like, his home. Yeah. And he'd try and, like, you know, he'd meet up with mum and they'd have, you know, go and visit her at the school and stuff. And then oh, um, wow. he'd get dragged back. And That's your mum's brother. Yep. Yeah. And they'd do that electric shock treatment. No way. Yeah. So when he got back, they'd, you know, said that he was out of control, which at the time, which would be known as ADHD, but they'd say these kids are out of control, like they don't listen, they don't sit down, they can't stay still. It's like, why, why would any kid want to stay there, you know? Yeah. And he's, uh, her, he's her older brother, he just wants to find mum, but he'd get taken back to the homes and they'd do that electric shock treatment. My uncle's like, you know, that's not long ago, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I think my mum ended up in two foster placements, but... Being abused, being abused in care and a lot of trauma and, you know, then she went on to this place, St Ursula's College, and she was raised by nuns mm. then. She speaks of this nun, Sister Regina, who helped her connect back with, you know, Pop. Oh, yeah. So she got to meet, you know, her dad um, when she was 16 and they got to, like, you know, she said that she went back home and got to meet all her family, you know, and on, on Pop's side and... Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, where, so where um back in where was it? Um, Ivanhoe. I oh, think. yeah, yeah. Or maybe she Which went. Which is that direction too? Eh? Yes. Ivanhoe's on the way to. Yeah, yeah, it's Bro all. Well, Kenya and that, eh? Yeah. I didn't know Ivanhoe because there's a jail there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the only reason I heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah. think it's still open. I think it might be closed now. Yeah, I wonder. Ivanhoe. And Bree closed. Did it? Yeah. Bree closed. Bree was like young offenders. It was like a young offenders, but like. Yeah, far out. Um, I even know it was minimum security. Yeah. Yeah, minimum security for men, so I never got to go there. <laughs> a broken Hill was the, the, the last stop. That was the punishment jail. Yeah, yeah bet. I never, it'd be yeah, so hot there. I could imagine. Yeah. Um, 
and also like I, I heard a sad story about your uncle. Yeah. Uh, death died in a police station. Yeah. Um. Is that the same uncle that you're talking about? My uncle Mark. He he passed a, like he um the story was um he passed away. And the cops brought his body bag to the Mish, yeah. where his mother was, and they didn't even like you know I guess you. You ask them to come to the morgue if you're going to identify a body. They kind of brought the body bag in the back of the paddy, opened it up, showed the family, and was like, "Is this is this Mark?" You know, and yeah. that was traumatizing for Mob. You know, fucking um, hell. Yeah. So Dungey's just rocking up in a paddy wagon, and pulling out a family member. Yeah. What the fuck is that? It's disgusting. It's crazy. Yeah. And you think that's like you don't even have respect for the dead, you know? Like. Did, did they give an explanation? Nah, it was kind of just, you know, like every death in custody, yep. everything was swept under the rug. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, p- police can do no wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah We're yeah, the savages, course. you know. We're the ones doing crime, so who gives a fuck about criminals, you know. Oh, I love how you said <coughs> that, police can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, you're 100% right about that. Yeah. Did you see the the two gunjis on the news just then? They nah. raped the schoolgirl. Oh. Yeah, yeah well, but two gunjis on the news, how yeah, you said that. They got arrested for two Sydney coppers. They were like sexually harassing kids at um, train stations. And they got found guilty for having sex with an underage schoolgirl and filming it on the sly. And they admitted to it. And they said, this is what, oh, we used to make this game. We'll go out and try to crack onto women, including schoolgirls. They just got sentenced yesterday. It was just on the news and um, just walked home. But yeah, like, cause they can't do no wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get locked up for having a knife when I'm 14, no charges. But yeah, oh, it's very it's different, eh? <laughs> it's just that privilege, you know? Yeah. Like, or just, you know, they can do sick shit and get away with it. Yeah, like, yeah. this is like, you know, we're doing little crime. Like, you yeah. know, crimes that aren't. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, they're locking us up for being drug addicts or stealing or whatever. Yeah. And they're doing that shit. Putrid. And bashing them when they're the ones who hit us yeah. first. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> they like bash us, then charge us. Yeah. yeah. They charge us <laughs> for what getting you bashed. Get for pissing me off. <laughs> Fucking scums. Nah, How's mate. your life now? Nah, How's your life with your kids? It's good. Yeah. Yeah, and nah, I'm like, I feel really mentally, I feel really happy. Yeah. You know, um, there's some days where it's like, where I get cravings or I think, you know, romanticize things or like, because I don't drink and I'll romanticize, you know. Oh, it'd be nice to go out, but then I'm like, I can't drink, you know. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, 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 not yeah. a normal drunk. So yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's nice to be able to wake up to my kids, see them, and being able to be like, I'm providing for my family now. Like I, yeah. I'm, I'm like a bread, like making bread in my family, yeah, and yeah. you know, being able to spoil them, and you know, f- so they never have to want for nothing, and go and do little nice things with my daughter, and do nice things with my son, and have good, good holidays, good that's birthdays. Quite, that's mad. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it makes like, you know, everything, you know, that I went through, it's like it was all worth it, you know? Like yeah. you think back then, oh, if I could change anything, but it's like if I, did, if I didn't go through what I went through, I wouldn't be who I am today. And, yeah. you know, I'm glad 100%. that it's turned. 100% if you didn't go through what you went through. Yeah. Who says if you, that's why I say that a lot. Who says if you weren't in jail, you'd be alive? You know what I mean? Everything happens for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even think like there were parts of my life where, um, not to say in any way that, drug use was good but um i I strongly feel that everything happened for a reason and when i had my drug addiction and i look back at my life and i think that like being the drug addiction living the way i was living getting on drugs and actually going to jail actually saved me a lot saved my mental you know like my mental health even yeah you know what i mean jail is is some sometimes like a blessing it just depends the way you look at it see how you said there you romanticize sometimes do you find staying off drugs or off alcohol do you ever struggle with alcohol mostly yeah, yeah. um you know how you're saying like um you don't drink yeah. is that because one there was one time it, you were drinking too much if i drink i black out oh that's it like every time yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like and then i turn into this obnoxious like asshole you know like where i'm i guess um a whole different person like it changes my personality way too much yeah um, and I don't like that, you know, I don't like waking up thinking, oh, fuck, what did I do? Or what did I say? Or, mm. you know, who did I offend? Or, you know, I'd rather, if I'm going to offend someone, just be straight about yeah, it. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, it was like, it was, and 
I guess it goes hand in hand, you know. Like you have a drink, it can that could lead me to the drugs. I was about to say that. I was waiting for a gap to say that. I was saying (laughs) like it's that's actually like a lot of people coming off drugs or trying to stay clean. Alcohol changes you. Yeah. So you're an alcohol. Who cares? I've got smash drugs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Next minute, yeah. Next minute you're up for two weeks. (laughs) 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 Or for yeah, yeah, on, on that drug. For me, next minute it's your overdose and die. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one extreme yeah one extreme to the other um yeah that's that's grouse and, and like your music's pumping your music's pumping like look everything you've said already how, how excited are you about that like is that just unbelievable yeah it's surreal it's crazy eh? yeah it's like oh and like the pinnacle of your life being a guest on my podcast like how good does it get no nah. ah, <laughs> no <laughs> no, but like I was pretty jade for yeah. this. So I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, mad yeah. <laughs> yeah, hectic. Yeah. yeah, like, but no, for real. Like to go from that, and not, I share your experience to go from that, and like I don't know if it happens already, but soon people will be singing out to you in the streets, and um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I share that. Like sometimes I feel Keenan said it on my podcast once. He said it's like um, imposter syndrome or something like that. Yeah, he go. I feel that. Like I yep. feel like sometimes I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Like, why are you watching me? Like, I'm from ALJ, you know what I mean? Like, you feel like you don't deserve it because you come from such an extreme, you know what I mean? And yeah. Yeah, and it's a spin out, it's, it's grouse. Um, yeah, like, the struggle actually getting off drugs, like... It was a struggle, like, I guess, you know, like, when I got out, my partner at the time, he was still using, you know, and... Oh, that's it. Yeah, that and... It made it so hard. Yeah, it was shit, like, because... Even when he came in, when I was giving birth, he was off his head and I'm like, oh, no way. just coming in. <laughs> when you got out, were you with him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would have been so hard. That's one of the hardest things. Like people trying to do something different, but their partner's doing it. Even something as simple as like vaping. Yeah. Like, or cigarettes or something. So I can imagine like if he's sitting there off his, off his head. Yeah, it was, and it was like, triggering. Like, we starting on him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> You know, we had a new had a new baby together. I'm like, you know, I guess you're trying to, you end up mothering. You know, yeah. I was end up like, you know, you got to do this, and it's like you get tired. Like it was just another added. People aren't going to change unless they want to. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter how much they say you love, they love you, or how much you love them. Like you're just going to do your own head in trying to save people. You yeah. can't save people. Of course not. And um. It was a long realisation, like, put up with it for years, you know. Like, after I gave birth to son, like, it was just like, when are you going to get it together, you know. And it was hard because it was like, I'm just going to have to take this foot off on my own, like, yeah. and step out on my own. And just, we can still be together, but just keep you at a distance, I yeah, guess. Yeah. And so I went into rehab there and, you know, um, even in rehab, he'd come and see me off his head. And yeah, I'm that's just, uh, Mate. No way. You know, but I, it was also a good reminder of like, I don't want to be where you're at anymore. Like, mm. I want to grow now. Like, I want to do better for this little boy. I want to do better for my daughter. I want to do better for my big son. And yeah. it was. Oh, so you got a you got a big son. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't I didn't speak about him. Yeah. How nah, old's he? I got um. So Alinta, she's eleven, yep. and then I got Emeru, he's eight, yep. and then my youngest fella's five. Oh, gross. Yeah. Emeru. That's yeah, Emeru. Yeah. yeah I see. You end up going to rehab. Yeah, it was. Uh, very yoga based and oh no way <laughs> yeah <laughs> yoga based yeah <laughs> so you're breathing your way out of j- yeah. yogi <laughs> yeah just but humbling did it my help way all jokes aside yeah like it did um <laughs> very yoga based i love that one <laughs> was it good it was all right it was yoga based it's like yeah let's do yeah <laughs> it's different <laughs> yeah yeah, like Are they hippies. Nah, like the chick, the manager, she was Indian. Yeah, so yeah, she, yeah. I guess she had, I guess proper, you know. Oh, like, so proper yoga. Yeah, proper right. yoga, wasn't real some, yoga, not yeah, hippie what, dippy, what, what, fake yoga. <laughs> hairy women with incense. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> it's a real deal. Yeah. It was all right. It was very um. I don't know. Like it wasn't culturally pro- like I felt yeah. like my mum would call me up and she'd, they'd be like, "You talk to your mum too much. Maybe you should cut your mum off." Like, you know. And I'm thinking, they think my mum's on drugs. They're assuming that my mum's... They said that. Yeah, they like, you shouldn't talk to your mum as much. They just automatically assumed yeah. that my mum was on drugs. For no reason? For no, They never meant her nothing, what? you know? And You talk to your mum too much. We're putting <laughs> this, like, this rehab on show hard here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fuck <laughs> them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they yeah. did my head in some, like, yeah. you know, there were some things where... 
you know, and I remember at a counselor, um, Andrea at the time from Weave and I'd meet up with her and we'd have a big yarn and she'd be like, you know, just hold in there, you know, yeah. and there was things that really helped me. Like they helped me get my son back and I can't thank them enough for that, you know, oh, like yeah, they helped me give, have a place where I could, you know, but rehab, rehab's good, but it's like you, you want to, you got to be, want to be clean, you know, yeah, I didn't finish sure. the program. Like I ended up leaving. I said to docs, like I hadn't got my son back and I'm like, you know, if I leave now, will you just take son off me? They're like, nah, but it's Friday, Chloe, you're going to get a Friday night itch, you know? And I'm like, I use drugs every single day. Like yeah, it's yeah. not well, it's Friday, it's yeah. special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a Monday, <laughs> yeah. you know? And they said I could go and then, yeah, left then and yeah. then, and then got in like touch with like um, Brighter Futures and then, you know, um, Red Cross and they helped me get a house, helped me get on my feet. Oh, that's hectic. Yeah, and I thought, you know, it, it was, like rehab's great. Yeah. Especially if you need time to yourself and, um, you know, learn about friendships, good and bad friendships yeah, yeah. and There are meet people new that people. can benefit from that stuff. Yeah. Some people don't need it. Like some people see how like you were saying, and me too, I'd be in a rehab and it's, what are you saying to me? I'm eight. It's like, if I want to do something, I'll do it. And you're right when you said you can't change people. I think the most you can do is you can assist someone who wants to change but doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And I feel like that's a small category of people who are coming off drugs. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's just those people that can be helped. But I feel what you're saying. Um, I never went to a rehab and if I did, I probably would have just been like exactly like, what, do you, what is this shit? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, let's get back yeah. to yeah. But it's good what they've done for you, and it's good how... You see, you moved back to Marylands. Yeah, yeah. And, and But you grew up in Marylands. You specifically chose to move back to Marylands, or was that coincident, coincidental? Um, nah, because uh, my mum my mum won't move, you know. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. like, you know, I want to be close to her. I want to torment her and yeah. <laughs> do her heading. <laughs> so yeah. it was like, I wanted to be around family. I knew it was a hard decision because I grew up around there. It's like triggers everywhere. I know people who are on crack, like yeah. old you know, old memories there that kind of, you know, where you can picture it in your head and you get a craving and stuff, but... Um, no, I think that's the best to move back there. It's the best to front it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you've got to... Uh, 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 in my opinion, everyone's different. Like, I'm, I'm not the guru of this, but if, if you're not facing something, like, how, how overcome it are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you need to face it. You can hide anyone from anything. doesn't mean they're not something. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. You, you can hide, you can put a thief in jail with nothing to steal, and it, what is he not a thief? <laughs> he's not stealing, is he? Yeah. But he's not in a shop, is he? You know what I mean? So like, I feel like going back there and facing those memories and those triggers is the best. Because if you could do it there, then you're sweet. Make it anywhere. You, you're sweet forever. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I felt that too. Like, I, if I was to go, like I've tried it before, where I went to Mildura, like to moved up, like moved down there with my cousins and tried to start a new life, you know, but. I was just running away yeah. from everything. Like it wasn't really, and then I'd go there, and then in the country, you just drink. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like one, you yeah, one yeah, after yeah. the Everyone's other. Just drinking, eh? <laughs> yeah, just piss ups in the back. Mad yeah, times, yeah, like, yeah, but yeah. it's like that's all you can do in the country. Yeah. Like if you don't have a job or nothing, like even if you do have a job, <laughs> knock yeah. off and drink just around drink. the fire. So it's not much different to here, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> 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 going around Eve Gate too. <laughs> yeah. Might be a hard question. What would you say to yourself when you were at rock bottom or to any other any other girls out there in a similar position? What would you say to yourself? Um, you're worth it. You know, um, we all got purpose. We're all here for a reason. Like it might seem like we're not, you know, you might not find your purpose yet, but it's there, you know. Um, where we're at now, it's not forever. Um, things will get better. Got to action it um, and, you know, f follow your dreams. Like, f you know, we never dreamt of being junkies or criminals when we was young, but, mm. you know, we dreamt of other things. Follow them dreams, you know, and you can make it out. Never give up on giving up. Yeah. It's a big one, yeah. Yeah. Fall off, f get back up. I like how you said that. We never dreamed of that when we were kids. Just try yeah. to revive those dreams. Yeah. You know, those thoughts before, you know. Nita. Yeah, that's it. 100% true words. So, what's your Insta? Tell us. Oh. Tell them. Follow her. Baka. Baka on Insta. B-A-R-K-A-A -A underscore underscore. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Yeah, where, where's the music? The AP. Gun AP, I've listened to it. Mums, I'm not just saying it because she's a guest and I have to say it. Although, even though I do have to say it, like, <laughs> but this one I'm saying mums. It's like, I'm saying mums, I listen to it, it's hectic. Um, where do we, where do they get your EP? Stream it where? All platforms. All platforms. Let's see. Yeah. Go, Barker. That's Give it, a follow, come on. pump the music. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, my brother. Hey, <laughs>